Okay, the next thing we'll see about the GNS3 iOS topology setup. So probably in this in this topology we'll we'll configure some basic steps uh, of adding the iOS routers and then setting up a basic topology here. So the prerequisite again I already added the images previously. So and we'll drag and drop the routers and then we'll get into the command line and save the topology with the initial configurations. So once you install the GNS3 uh, and when you open up, so this is what you will see for the first time. And of course, you will see these green symbols indicating that it's working. You also can integrate with VM. Uh, that I'll show you later. So you need to go to the new project and you can save this with some name like uh, generally you, you always want to save this in, a, in your folder, probably a selected folder and then click OK. So compulsory, you have to save the file initially in the new GNS3. Uh, you can see I'm using 2.0 version 2.1.0 B1. But again, this is like a beta version. So next thing, you can drag and drop the routers. Of course, you can only drag and drop the routers for the images what you have added. So I have already already added the images for all these ones. So I'll be using some router like 36, let's say. So I need four routers, drag and drop the four routers as per your requirement. As per your topology, you need to design your topology. And then you got a cable connection here. Uh, and again, if you are using uh, the default settings, probably you see this one. This is the default view. That's what you'll see generally if you're installing. So I don't prefer this view. I can change the view to, to generally the the legacy option probably so there's something what I prefer and drag and drop the routers as per the topology and connect them by using the cable depending upon the modules you add uh, you'll see the options so as per my topology I'll be adding serial modules on the on the routers so if, if you just try to verify if, if you just want to verify the modules what I'm using you can select the routers so you can see it automatically saves the topology because so if I if I just select the routers here and go to option of configure you can see the slots I'm adding an M40 card with two Ethernet cards on the slot zero if you are using the same same router models probably you'll find the similar cards and I'm connecting S1 by 1 going to S1 by 0 as per my topology because uh, the initial configs are based on this topology only then s1 by 1 going to s1 by 1 so i don't need to connect any any lan interfaces but you can simulate a virtual a switch or a hub which is unmanageable you cannot manage this and you can connect to the switch this is something you can you can also do but generally i don't really prefer uh, I just use no keypillar command to, to make the interface up even though it is not connected. And once you're done with this, you need to start the routers, select all the routers and start. And automatically when you start the routers, it may increase the CPU utilization. Uh, to minimize the CPU utilization, we use idle PC values. So also check the CPU utilization. Sometimes you see here, uh, it goes to 100%, uh, depends, up, depends if you don't set the ideal PC values for that router images. To minimize this CPU utilization, you can select the ideal PC values to calculate. And it will give some values in general. You can select any one of the options here, uh, preferable the star values, click OK, apply and OK. So your topology will be automatically saved again. So whenever you make any changes, it will save your topology. Now you can also use some kind of auto ideal PC values. Uh, auto ideal PC values are like automatically it will adjust the ideal PC values. So if, if, if you want, you can select the manual or auto ideal PC values. So normally if the auto ideal value sets, it will automatically minimize the CPU utilization. So it may it may go to uh, 20, 30 percent depending upon the performance of your machine, the processor and the RAM capabilities. So next thing is like once you 
uh, set up this, then we need to make some changes to the configuration, like getting into the command line. So we can use something like console option to get into the command line in general. So I'm using secure CRT because I have changed the integration with this one. So if you have any licensed secure CRT programs, you can use that. Uh, or generally, uh, the default option will be will be putty here. So putty comes by default. So you can either use putty. So if, if you just want to manage uh, with a with a multiple views, you can you can use some external tools like putty or or super uh, super putty, which allows you to open up the console screens in multiple tabs. So I, I do prefer this, so that's the reason I'm using. So you can click on console to open up the console of all the devices. And you can see the routers are done with the process and there is no initial configuration present here. So probably you want to do the initial configs. So you need to copy paste the initial configs, or type down the initial configs as it is. But I do have initial configs already in my notepad. So I'll copy this and I'll paste it here. Of course, make sure that you give write command. Write command will ensure that your initial configs are also saved along with the with your topology. So I got all these configs in the notepad already just to save the time. But of course, if you are doing for the first time, you, it will, you need to uh, make sure that you type in. And automatically when you select anything here, it will copy. And whenever you right click, automatically it will paste. So you need to know the default interface, even in the putty also, when you select anything, it will automatically copy. When you right click, it will automatically paste. So in secure CRT also, I have set the same options. Copy the initial configs on the router three, and then right click will paste, and then copy the initial configs on the router four as well. And then I'll copy and paste on the router four as well. Now you don't need to save the topology because at the back end the topology will be automatically saved. And if you say show IP interface brief to verify the initial configs, you can see all the initial configs are loaded. And then you can use this topology for the future use. If you want to uh, use it later on, probably most of my labs will be based on the, this kind of IP addressing. Of course, I don't do any routing because the routing protocols I may change depending upon the requirement. So now you can stop this topology and you can uh, stop these routers and close the topology and whenever in the future if you want to use the topology you can actually open up and you will be loaded with the same topology with the initial configs. Let me just quickly show you like I'll try to open up this GNS3 once again. Now you can see I can open up the recent projects or I can go to file from where I can I can load my topology. So you will see the topology will be saved. That's what I'm expecting here. And you can, if you want to verify the configurations, we can go and start a specific router or all the routers and then open up the console screen to verify and make sure that your initial configs are saved because it's really you don't really want to uh, do the initial configs all the time for implementing the labs so you just configure and 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 save the topologies here so if you go and see here show IP interface brief you should be able to see the same initial configs what we saved earlier 